Nasturtium Pencil Crane Weekly Artwork Draw With Me. Hi, I'm Alison. This week I was doing a little bit of art. I'm very much a beginner artist. I've been doing art on and off for a long time, but I'm just sharing a little bit of my journey with you. This week I'm sourcing my reference drawing from The Secret Language of Flowers by Samantha Gray. And this is the little image. So this is a handy little book and it's all about the meanings of flowers and what flowers mean, what sort of things. And this time we're doing nasturtium. So let's just have a look at some of my basic art supplies. I am not by any means a full-time artist or anything like that. I'm a hobby artist, I would put it that way. And I do have a few art supplies I'm just going to share with you because I'm sure you've got these things in your house as well. So I do use the Look at Home sketchbook, but honestly, you can use any sketchbook you like. If you don't have a sketchbook, go straight for some paper. But once you've got a sketchbook, you're going to be wanting to draw your, your pictures and your, and your artwork in the sketchbook. When I'm doing my pencil sketch, I do use a 2H pencil that is slightly harder. I find the HB is just too soft. So I like a 2H pencil, pretty straightforward. The pencil crayons I use are the Faber-Castell Polychromos Colored Crayons. Again, I'm sure you've got some crayons, if not your kids will have, and you can certainly start with what you have. I just buy the Polychromos one by one. I don't have a set. I just bought a few colors to start with. I mainly got greens to start with, and um, because I do quite a lot of botanicals and, and plant work and stuff like that. I by no means have all the colors, but I do have a selection now. And I only recently got the blues, which was kind of one of those things. I had the blues missing out of my palette for a long, long time. So in this drawing, we're going to go from this simple pe pencil sketch to the actual finished article. And I'll just walk you through how we how I got there. So I started off with a straightforward pencil outline in my sketchbook. I always do a 10 millimeter board around it just gives a bit of an edge and I try and line the artwork up not necessarily in the center but this one is slightly towards the bottom two-thirds of the page it just seems to add a little balance to it I'm just drawing the one bloom and one leaf I'm not doing the whole the whole plant with all the leaves and all the blooms on it so with the close-up just of the pencil outline, I just give the basic lines of where I see the shapes are going to be and just some main structures on the leaf and the petals. I then come in with a little bit of light shading straight away to give definition and some depth to the actual artwork so that the petals stand a little forward and we can see that the leaf is slightly starting to curl from the middle outwards. That's the idea of the shading already to give depth to the drawing. So this is in a very light grey. I then went in with the creams and yellow highlights because I start from my lightest colours first. I put a little bit of cream just on the veins of the leaf on the very very tips of those petals because that's going to be a little bit of highlight later on but I wanted to lay that down to start with. Next I came in with some uh, cadmium yellow, straight up yellow, and I started laying down some colour on the bloom. Ult ultimately the anastasia will be orange, but there are other colours within it, and that's why I like to just come along and edge up a little bit there in the yellow. Moving further on, I, I started to add some of the dark chrome yellow. This is a sort of in-between, more of an apricot colour, I would have called it. But anyway, and I started laying in uh, light pencil, uh, coloured pencil strokes, in the in the vein in the same direction that the petal grows so i'm not crossing over all the lines are pointing towards the center so that that's how the petal actually is moving on i then went on to work with the leaf a little bit i started putting in some may green which is what it's called it's a mid green and just on the edges starting to bring further depth to that leaf because the idea is that the leaf actually springs from the center and kind of curls outwards. It's quite a distinctive leaf, a nasturtium leaf. Of course, you can eat them in salads. It's, it's quite an interesting uh, plant. Then I came along with the deeper orange. This is called orange glaze and I really started laying down darker, darker colors in the actual main bloom. It's trying to not overwhelm it, but to fill in in the actual and by drawing away from the center to the out of the petal as well just to help start to bring it up so the each color i lay on is darker than the one before moving back to the leaf there i brought in some olive green and i started 
bringing more definition to the to the leaf because it has quite strong white veins running through segmenting the actual leaf into little lobes I suppose they're called I don't really know what they're called but so I, that was olive green and I just laid that down taking care that we could still see the vein then I start, then I came in with a little bit of scarlet red and a much deeper green and I'm adding a little bit more edge to the petals there building that bit right in the middle getting some real color in the middle areas there. I also then at that point added some leaf detail because the leaves themselves are kind of like got little sort of bumps all over them. They're kind of like knobbly almost. It's a very subtle texture to it. So I just did that with a little bit of a very sharp pencil and um, with the darker olive and just putting some wiggle woggles over the leaf, but again, trying to avoid the veins as much as possible. Then with the main bloom, I came in with a little bit darker bit there, right in the middle. I'm not quite sure what you call that part of a plant, but anyway, and just adding that depth into that middle piece there of the plant and some touch ups just on the edges of, of the petals. So that's about it. I then added some shade on the background and I, I tried to do a light gray shade that's running diagonally across the page from bottom left to top right. It, it seems to just bring the, the flower forward otherwise it's just on a very stark page and then I created a little on the on my left hand page because I only ever draw on one side I only ever draw on the right side of the page on the left hand page I put the name nasturtium and love conquers all because that's what this plant means as per the book I referenced earlier so nasturtium means love conquers all which is kind of interesting so if someone brings you a a posy or a plant of nasturtium that's what they're saying to you which I thought is really quite interesting I then just put the date on the bottom of the page because this is my sketchbook and I'll flick through it later and just see how I felt about how my, how my art's holding up and the development of the stuff I'm drawing from last year or six months ago. And you can certainly see that when you put dates on your artworks in your sketchbook. And here we have the, the final drawing. It's quite a close up there. It's I, I'm very happy with the way it is. I like the way the, the, the bloom is and the colors are. The actual plant itself, when you then look at the reference drawing, you can see it's a very deep, almost a dull orange to, on the actual petals. And I seem to have more striations and stripes on mine, but I'm happy with that. And the leaf maybe could have been a little darker, but I'm really, I'm happy the, with, with the way it laid. It's interesting how the petals actually overlap each other. It's a five petal plant, but the petals are not laid evenly. Some are in front of the other. So you really do have to look carefully at what you're drawing. So that is the idea there, looking at the reference drawing from the book, The Secret Language of Flowers, and my actual final drawing. Yeah. And just in closing, my gift to you is that if you do join my mailing list, um, you'll receive a free colouring page PDF download every time I write to you, which is often once a week or now and again, it might be every fortnight. But for each email I send out to my mailing list, I always attach a link to a colouring page that you can print out and colour in at home, which is great. So I'm Alison Hazel Art. This is my channel. We do colouring pages, sketch and art journaling, pen and ink and a little bit of watercolour. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.